So recently I talked to a lot of people that want to build AI agents, AI applications, and they don't really understand what are the components that are needed to actually build it and integrate it in their business. So what we'll do in this video is I'll just show you all the components you need to know about if you want to build an AI agent or an AI application, what you need to know, how they are connected together, so then it will be much easier for you to build your own. And this diagram is illustrating everything you need to know and we're gonna break down each of those components. And by the way, if you don't know me, my name is Jonathan and I've been building software for the last 10 plus years since I was 13 years old. And now my focus is on building AI agents and I share all my learnings on this channel. So check it out and subscribe and like. So first, what's an LLM? So in simple words, an LLM is a large language model, an AI tool that is trained on a lot of data on the internet, on Google, on a lot of pages. It has a lot of data and it's able to understand human responses and able to output human responses. And we have examples for these models like OpenAI, Claude, DeepSeek. When we think about it in a context of an AI application or AI agent, this is the brain of our application. So recently, we see DeepSeek that came out. Whenever these models are coming out, it gives us an opportunity to upgrade our AI agents. They are smarter, cheaper, faster, better performance, and so on. So when we think about LLMs, these are the brains of our AI agents. So what is an actual system prompt is the instructions that we give to our AI agent, what you should do, what's your job, we have the role, of, are you an assistant, you are a sales rep, you are a customer support, context, what do you need to know before you, you execute the tasks. And we need to imagine the system prompt, like we go to a, a new employee or someone in the street, we try to explain to them what is the job that they need to do. Once they have the system prompt, these instructions, they know exactly how to get the job done. Uh, we have example of what should be the input and the output. We have some kind of limitations. If it's a customer support agent, we don't want to respond like uh, what's the weather. And we also have external capabilities that we are able to access our database. We are able to search for the weather weather API, and we'll talk about in a moment what are tools and what are function tools. Core logic is the LLM that we discussed, but the system prompt is what you should actually do, the set of instructions, the manual. If we look at the diagram, so we have the agent, we have the LLM that is the brain that is able to connect all these things, and then we have the system prompt that is the instructions. Then we move on to an AI workflow. So a lot of people make a mistake between AI agent, AI workflows. They think like anything is an AI agent, and it's a little bit confusing. So I'll try to clarify this. An AI workflow is a step-by-step -step process that your agent or in general, your process can follow. So it has an input, it's doing some kind of processing, then it has an output. We have an input, we have an LLM that is not related to our agent LLM. It can be the same model, but these are different LLMs. So we have a mini brain for this uh, workflow as well. We have the set of instructions of this system prompt as well, and then we have a result. They look pretty similar, right? Like what's the difference between AI agent and AI workflow? This is more like a linear process, okay? We have a set, you do one, two, three, and that's it. There is no like dynamic, it's not flexible, and you cannot move between steps. And we need someone to set the actual step-by-step -step process. So you need to do one, two, three. This needs to be uh, directed by a human. Now then if we define what's an AI agent, kind of a smart problem solver that is able to solve uh, solutions, not by a fixed path, not by fixed steps, but it's more dynamic and it knows to reason or think about, decide what are the next steps. Usually AI agents, they are able to use knowledge bases, tools, LLMs, and using all these components, they are able to decide what's the best next to, to perform. And because it's flexible, it's, it's perfect for handling sales chat, customer support, and so on. If we take a sales chat, for example, maybe we want to generate this lead or turn this lead into a sale, right? And there is a step-by-step -step process that we know that we need to get through for the prospect. Maybe it's giving them information, getting them on a call, and so on. But sometimes we cannot predict. Maybe the customer has 10 questions, they can have two questions, and maybe they even ask unrelated questions. But these AI agents will be able to handle this. The AI workflow is just a linear process that will not be able to do this because there is no like dynamic decision-making in this case. And from this diagram, we can also see that AI agents can also use AI workflow within their implementation. And we'll dive into this in a moment. So then we have a rug, okay? A lot of people talk about rug 
and it's cool and it's all these things, what actually does it mean? A rug is a technique that is able to take the relevant context connected along with an LLM and then provide a context aware or relevant answer to the user. And this technique allows us to take documents from our business. Maybe we have knowledge bases, case studies, and we are able to feed it to our AI agent. We are able to give these documents to the AI agent. So then instead of providing random responses that they take took out of the internet they will give you specific related based on the data that you provided them so in order for us to implement a rug we need to have all our documents stored in a database so let's imagine now this is an ai agent that is a customer support on your website we get the user query and we then want to answer a question based on a document or based on our business context so the question is how do we pull the relevant context only. We first need to understand how we build a vector store. Because we want to only get the relevant context, the first thing we need to do is we need to divide our documents to smaller chunks. So whenever the user is asking something, it will only give us the relevant chunks for the user query. So we have the documents, we separate them to chunks, we then use an embedding function. This embedding function, what it's doing, this embedding model is coming from OpenAI, Claude, Bedrock, you have all, the, all these vendors. It's taking the text from our document, it's going through the embedding model and in the end it gives us a vector so it gives us vectors numbers basically the reason why we need vectors is because the way it's calculating which documents or which text is the most relevant it's doing some distance calculations whether it's dot product similarity search cost and similarity you have all sorts of algorithms or ways to compare between these vectors and once this calculation is happening it takes the user query vector it takes the vectors that are stored in our vector store comparing these numbers once it gets only the relevant that are closest in distance and meaning then we take the relevant vectors and we don't want the vectors because we want the text actually to send it to the llm so we send the text of the relevant documents okay so we want to do this process one time because we know our documents are not changing the text is never changing so this is why we need to have a vector store that is keeping our documents and embeddings together in one place to summarize we need the numbers to perform this similarity search and comparison but then we need the text to give it to the llm because as we said the llm is able to handle regular language once we have the vector store again it's full with uh, chunks of documents and with uh, the numbers of the of each of these documents and then we have the llm so here we retrieve we get the relevant documents and we tell the llm okay based on this relevant context answer the user query question it then doing the the calculation and gets the answer back to the user. Now, just to illustrate this way better, this is practically how you build this with code. And by the way, we have different videos on how to implement this with code step by step, but just to make sure that you understand this, we are fetching the documents here based on the question. We take three documents and we perform a similarity search. Then we are taking this prompt and we say, answer the question based on this following context, the context we got from the vector store, the, our database, we use this OpenAI model to perform this task and in the end we get a response. So we talked about AI workflows and AI agents. In this case, this is an AI workflow that is accessing our vector store database and is connected to an LLM and is providing a response. The input is a question, the output is a response based on our documents. So hopefully now it's clear. I tried to make it as clear as possible, but I know it's a little bit confusing. Maybe you rewatch it, but this is why we need this, this vector store. So this vector store is a unique database that is able to store these vector numbers and these documents together in one place. You have dedicated vector stores like Quadrant, Pinecone, and so on, but you also have plugins in PostgreSQL that you can use PG Vector, you can use PG Vector Scale. That is great for building AI agents and AI applications because not only you can store vector stores, but you can also store relational database data, which in these databases, Quadrant and Pinecone and ChromaDB, you cannot. But if you are building an AI app or an AI agent and you're using Pinecone and Quadrant, you'll also need a separate relational database. This is why I like Postgres. And again, I made a video on how to, why to use PostgreSQL for your projects, but also how to integrate it in a remote environment. I'll link it below. 
So we have the agent, we talked about the system prompt, the LLM, we talked about AI workflows, and we also talked about this rug. Now let's talk about tools. So we talked about separately this AI workflows, but how do we actually connect these workflows to our agent? This is where tools come in. So function tools are helping us integrate custom actions into our agent's flows. For example, if someone is asking about the weather, and again, we need to remember LLMs are just trained on data. They don't have access to the internet. Some of them do have, by using function tools, but as they are the LLMs, they have no connection to the internet. They just have a lot of data that they are trained on. So if someone is asking about the weather right now, they are not able to provide this. This is why we want to have a function call. So whenever someone is asking about the weather, instead of answering the answer based on the data you are trained on, go and use this function instead that is gonna call the API of the weather and give real time data. So to define a function tool, we need to three components. We need the name, we need the description. This description is important because it tells the agent when it should use it. And then we have the implementation, the actual code or function that it's gonna call. So if I'll take a look at this example, in this case, the name of the tool is register service request. This is the description, okay? So this one registers a new service request in Airtable, and this is when you should use it. And then the function, this one is what actually it should call. So whenever you need to save a new service request, you're gonna call this function and this function, what it's doing is just calling Airtable and saving the lead inside of Airtable. Another example of this is the knowledge base that we just talked about. We talked about the rag and how to build it, the vector store, everything, but now how does the AI agent know knows when to use it. This is how. We tell it that this is the query knowledge base and this is useful for when you need to answer question about the service information or service offered, availability, costs, and so on. So whenever the AI agent is getting answers about the service, costs, whatever, it's gonna use this function. And what this function is doing is what I already showed you, getting the relevant context, combining this with the LLM and giving back the response. It's also a good practice to mention your tools or the abilities of your AI agent inside the system prompt that we already covered. Back in the system prompt, we talked about tools and we mentioned that we wanna define this in the system prompt. We talked about now how to define the function tool, name, description, and imp implementation, but now we also wanna mention it in the system prompt. So for example, we are saying it here, always use query knowledge based tool to retrieve relevant information whenever the user asks the question and you don't have the answer. Okay, so we have our set of tools, we define them, we implement them and then we also mention them on the system prompt. We have all sorts of special capabilities that we want our agent to have. Maybe saving our CRM, maybe have access to our database about uh, order deliveries or something specific, maybe answer questions about the business, maybe get cost estimates. We are building all these workflows, then we connect those with function tools to our AI agent so it knows when to trigger them and when to use them. Next, we have agent orchestration framework and this tool is what allows us to connect everything together. So taking the AI agent, the LLM, the system prompt, the rug, the function tools, connect all of those together. There is options to use no-code tools like N8N that is the most powerful now in terms of no-code and uh, orchestration. This is one of the best tools to connect all of this together with the click of a button, with a few clicks of a buttons. Or if you are using tools, you can use libraries like uh, Llama Index, Langchain, Pydentic AI, and so on. So we can say that the agent framework is just the glue that is gluing everything together. And in the end of this, what comes out is this magnificent or whatever everyone is calling this powerful AI agent. Now, after that, we have LLM observability. So what is LLM observability? So what is LLM observability is basically helping us track metrics, speed, cost, different models, this is helping us to have like one dashboard where you see the costs of each of your calls, how the performance, the speed and everything. And it helps you get like calculated decisions, improve the performance of your agents, see whatever is going on. So after you kind of build your AI agent and you want to optimize it, you want to have a better overview on it. This is when you want to use like an LLM observability tool. So then you can take each process of your AI agent, zoom in on it, and check what are the things that you want to optimize to make it faster, provide better results for your customers, for your users. The options that you have is you have Langsmith and you also have Langfuse. I like Langfuse because it's open source. You can self-host it. And there is also an active community. Langsmith is also open source, by the way, but you cannot self-host it for free, which can get very expensive in the long run. So I recommend starting with Langfuse. Another important component is the API. So the API is sitting on top of our AI agent 
And this is what allows us to connect between the user, what the users are actually seeing and the AI agent itself. To do this, we need an API. And this also API allows us to connect to different sources. So maybe we wanna connect to our website. Maybe we also connect to Telegram. Maybe we wanna connect to, to WhatsApp. This one API allows us to integrate with multiple sources. It also allows us to handle multiple requests. And this way we have a scalable solution that if we want to handle like thousands of users, we have a flexible and scalable API that is sending the requests to our agent. Next, we have cloud services. So having an API is not enough. Once you have an API, someone can call it, but it's local. For actual people to use it outside of your computer, you need to have cloud services where they use the servers. We host our agents over there. We host our APIs. Then everything is running on the cloud. So it's running 24 seven. We can serve clients and customers 24 seven. If we need to increase the servers, the hosting, whatever it is, we can add more servers. We can make it more scalable. And you can use AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, which are the leaders in the space. And finally, we have the front end. So the front end is what actually the user interacts with. It can be the chat widgets on our website, it can be a WhatsApp, it can be a Telegram, it can also be just a connection for a webhook. For example, if, if you want to build an AI SDR, what you want to do is you want this AI agent to sit on your email, maybe on your Twitter DMs, maybe Instagram DMs. So in this case, the front end might be the social media platform or the Gmail. And all it's happening is whenever the user or someone, the prospect, the lead is sending a message, you're just gonna send it via the API to the agent. It's gonna handle it, get a response back and send the user the reply. So our front end is gonna call the API that is stored on a cloud service. And this is gonna give us the response back from the agent. Now to summarize all this chart, okay? So we start here with the user. The user is sending queries, sending questions, doing whatever. In this case, let's say it's accessing a website. We have a chat widget that is the uh, chatbot that we built. We can use voice flow. We can use custom code. It sends the user query to the API. The API is routing this to our AI agent. Our AI agent is combined from a system prompt, which is the instructions from an LLM model, which is the brain, the way he process all this data. We then have tools that are connecting to custom actions like getting cost estimates, saving leads to, to a database or accessing our database and implementing a RAG. A RAG is essentially a way to pull relevant context based on the user query. To do this, we need to store our documents in chunks inside of a vector store. To store them, we need to use an embedding model that is turning this text into numbers. Then we store it on the vector store. And again, to connect all these tools, we are using the AI agent. And to glue everything together, we need an AI agent framework orchestration that is helping us connect all of these. And we also have the cloud services that everything is stored and hosted on their platforms so we can serve customers 24 seven and we can scale our systems easier and we can provide the best experience for our customers. And that's it for this video. I know it's a lot of things to know and understand. Maybe you can rewatch it. And also there is different videos on each of these topics. We dive deep into each one of these and we build them from scratch with code so you can dive into them as well. If you're not technical, you don't need to build those, but just watch the beginning of each video because we explain what tech stack to use, why we are using these tools, what are the best tools to use and so on. If you made it so far to the video, first of all, thank you and I appreciate you. Please click the like button and also subscribe because I keep adding new knowledge to this channel as I learn. And if you need help on how to turn your idea into an AI agent or an AI workflow or an AI app, you can feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. We'll dive into your use case. I'll tell you what are the best tools you can use. And I can help you build a plan on how you can launch this AI agent in four to six weeks with the best tech stack based on your resources, based on your budget and whatever. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.